My name is Audrey Brooks. I am a physiotherapist at the Heart Institute. In this section, we will be talking about physical activity during your recovery. The focus will be on the first six weeks after you return home from the hospital. If you are following along in your patient guide, I will be covering pages 29 to 35. A balance of rest and activity should still be maintained to allow for continued healing and to conserve your energy. Activity should be increased gradually. Everyone's recovery is different. The, the rate at which you progress will depend on the severity of your cardiac event and your previous activity level. After four to six weeks, you should be back to performing your regular activities. It is recommended that you do regular physical activity as it will improve the function of your heart and lungs, improve your HDL cholesterol and triglycerides, lower your blood pressure, help you achieve a healthier body weight, improve your blood sugar, improve your muscle tone and bone density, increase your endurance and improve your confidence, improve your ability to cope with stress and decrease anxiety and depression. Walking is one of the earliest activities you're allowed to resume and it is one of the best exercises for improving your health. Let's review the suggested walking program. For the first and second week following your discharge from hospital, we suggest that you start with five to ten minutes of leisurely walking once or twice a day. For weeks three to six following your discharge from hospital, we suggest that you start your walking program with 10 minutes of slow walking. Increase your walk by one minute per day until you're walking 20 to 30 minutes per walk. Increase your speed and distance as tolerated, remembering that it is important to avoid shortness of breath and fatigue. Always begin your walks at a slow stroll for the first 100 feet or so, then increase your pace. Your walking time can be maintained at 30 minutes once or twice daily. It is important to start exercising for short periods of time and at a slow pace. Gradually increase the length of your walk before you increase the speed. If you're having difficulty following the above program, use interval training. Interval training consists of walking two to five minutes and then resting for two to five minutes. You repeat this pattern as many times as you're able to, gradually increasing the number of intervals. After your walk, stretch your calf muscle. They are likely to get tight as you begin to increase your daily activity. The picture on the screen is an example of someone stretching their calf. Stand straight and close to a solid surface on which you can use your hands for balance. Place one leg behind the other with both feet pointing forward. Bend the knee that is forward while keeping the back knee straight until you feel a stretch in the back of your calf. Hold for 15 to 30 seconds and then repeat with the other leg. Next we'll talk about exercise, exercise guidelines. So these are guidelines to follow, um, especially when first starting an exercise program. Walk on flat ground initially. If hills are unavoidable, walk more slowly when going uphill. It is best to wait about an hour after a meal before you exercise as extra energy is required for digestion. You should be back to your pre-walk or resting state within 10 minutes of completing your exercise. If not, the next time you exercise, reduce your time or speed. If you feel unwell, shorten your walking time. Go back to the previous level of activity for a few days. Listen to what your body is telling you. You may be trying to do too much too soon. 
Avoid exercising in extreme temperatures, such as hot, humid days or cold, windy ones. During this time, exercise indoors using stationary equipment or walk in the hallways of your house or apartment or in a mall. If you are using a treadmill, keep it flat. It is best not to use the incline. A stationary bicycle can also be very valuable especially if you have joint problems which make walking more difficult. Make sure you pedal at a slow speed with little or no tension. Avoid exercises where you hold your breath or bear down. Remember to stop and rest if you become very short of breath, feel weak, tired, lightheaded, or dizzy, have any discomfort, especially chest pain, have a fast heart rate or palpitations, or if you have nausea or excessive sweating. If these symptoms persist, call 911. In this section, we're, we're going to review self-monitoring tools. So the following tools will help to guide you with the progression of your exercise program. The first is the walk and talk test. This is the simplest test of all. At all times, you should be able to carry on a light conversation while exercising. The next one is the rate of perceived exertion scale or RPE scale. This is a number based scale used to describe how you feel during your exercise session. The number you choose should reflect your overall level of effort, including your breathing. There is no right or wrong answer. For exercise, you should be between 3 and 5 on a scale of 0 to 10. As your recovery and fitness improve, so too will your perceived level of effort. The change in effort that you feel over time for the same exercise is a measure of your improvement. On pages 32 to 33 of your patient guide, you will find an activity log. We suggest you use this activity log to track your progress. It can be very motivating as you're working on a walking program to track your progress. We suggest you work on the walking program we discussed until you start cardiac rehabilitation. You are strongly encouraged to participate in this program. Cardiac rehabilitation is a program offering any combination of exercise, education and counselling with the goal of helping you learn how to make heart healthy living a part of your everyday life. Research demonstrates that people who participate in cardiac rehabilitation are more successful at managing their risk factors compared to those who do not. In most cases, your cardiologist will automatically refer you to a cardiac rehabilitation program. If you have not received your appointment while in hospital or within a few weeks of being discharged from hospital, you should contact your doctor and discuss whether this program is right for you. Cardiac rehabilitation programs are designed to assist you in achieving and maintaining a heart healthy lifestyle and to help you return to everyday life. There are a number of program options available to residents living in the Ottawa Carleton area and surrounding regions. There is no cost for participation in these programs. For more detailed information about cardiac rehabilitation, please refer to pages 57 to 61 in your patient guide. In this next section, we'll talk about rest and activity at home. The following guidelines offer some helpful advice about activity in general. First of all, try to get eight hours of sleep every night during your recovery period. Minimize activity after meals, sit and watch television, or read the newspaper. Stop and rest when you feel tired. Give yourself enough time for activities so that you won't feel tense or rushed. 
Plan out your day to achieve a balance between active periods and quiet times. Spread out more difficult tasks and alternate an easy task with a difficult one. Housework is not advised for the first week you are home. After that, you may resume light housework, such as helping with meals and increase as your tolerance improves. Standing still for any length of time is very tiring. During your recovery, sit for as many activities as possible, for example, while washing dishes or preparing food. Here are some additional guidelines for resuming activities of daily living. So for weeks one to three, you can start doing some walking at a slow pace, writing, drawing, reading, watching television, knitting, needlework, climbing stairs slowly, short outings, lifting five to 10 pounds when necessary. What this means is not lifting more than five to 10 pounds for the first three weeks. At week two, you can start tasks such as light laundry, sweeping, dusting, washing dishes, and preparing light meals. For weeks three to six, you can start activities such as cleaning sinks and toilets, mopping the floor, vacuuming, ironing, bed making, light gardening, raking leaves, pushing a light power mower, lifting up to 20 pounds when necessary, bowling, and golfing with a power cart. Some people may have questions about sexual activity after a heart attack. If you have recently had a heart attack, your doctor might ask you to wait up to six weeks before resuming sexual activity. From a cardiac standpoint, sexual intercourse is like any other physical activity. Your heart rate and blood pressure increase. The activity is often compared to walking at three to six kilometers per hour on a level surface or climbing 20 stairs in 10 seconds. For more information, please see pages 42 to 44 of your guide.